We're going to discuss using the calculator with the order of operations. This is lesson 4D. Our next lesson is going to be fractions. So if you've missed or skipped previous videos, you may become lost or confused, and they're linked into this video's description for your ease, okay? When we do our calculations with a calculator, we use the same method. We use the order of operations exactly as when we used a pencil and paper. And the parentheses are still first, exponents are still second, multiplication and or division going left to right is next, then addition and or subtraction going left to right is last, and we skip to the next step if one is missing. So if we're doing a problem and there's no parentheses or exponents, we go straight to the multiplication or division going left to right, which, whichever is on the left we start with, see? All right? So if it's not there, skip it. But it's the same thing when we use a calculator. And we can see if our calculator is programmed to the order of operations by testing it with this equation. We put in 3 plus 4 times 2 equals. And the multiplication will be done first. Even though we put it in with this addition first, if it's programmed to the order of operations, it's going to give us the correct answer. It's going to do the 4 times 2 equals 8, and then it will add the 3 to equal 11. But if it's not programmed with the order of operations, like it's an older calculator, it will solve the problem in the same order we entered it. It's going to solve it in the same order we entered it if it's not programmed, okay? It'll do the 3 plus 4 equals 7, and then it'll multiply that 7 times the 2, and it'll be 14. So, you need to try this with your calculator. If you have a phone, an Android phone or whatever, it's going to be okay. I checked it out on my phone, and it's fine. It's older calculators I think we need to worry about. But try it anyway. If it's programmed with the order of operations, you're going to get an 11 when you put in 3 plus 4 times 2. If you put in the 3 plus 4 times 2 and you get a 14, you know it's not ordered. It's not programmed for the order of operations, and you're going to have to be very, very extra careful when entering information in that calculator because then you are going to have to put it in the order of operations, the PEMDAS order, all right? So if the calculator is not smart enough to do it, you're going to have to do it, okay? So this is using a calculator without PEMDAS. Lisa bought two containers of baby formula at $38.95 a piece. She gave the cashier a $100 bill. How much change should she get back? Now, we're going to pretend there's no sales tax, okay? We're just going to do the $38.95 that she bought two containers at that price, and she gave a $100 bill. So, we're going to enter, and this is, remember, this is without a PEMDAS calculator. We're going to enter the two times the $38.95, because she bought two of these. We're going to find out what it equals, and we're going to write down the answer on scratch paper or off to the side. I wouldn't try remembering it because you're going to end up having to start all over again if you forget what it was. So scribble it down somewhere. $77.90. Now we, we're going to treat this like two separate problems. Now we're going to put, we're going to clear it, put in 100, and hit minus the 77.90, and it's going to give us the answer. All right? So if your calculator does not have the PEMDAS function and you tested it and got a 14 for this, then you have to treat it like it's two separate problems, okay? Now, if it does have the PEMDAS, the order of operations programmed into the calculator, you're just going to be able to hit 100 minus 2 times 38.95 equals and you'll get a $22.10 as an answer. So hopefully it will be programmed for order of operations because it'll make your life easier, okay? Let's try another one. This is going to be without PEMDAS. Emma saves $3 each day for one year, and she gets $90 on her birthday as a gift. How much does she have in all? So without PEMDAS, we have to treat this like two separate problems. We know there's 365 days in a year, and you're going to come across things like this on the GED test. You have to know there's 24 hours in a day, seven days in a week, all right? You have to know that there's 365 days in a year. Well, if it's $3 each day that she's saving for 365 days, we multiply three times the 365, we get 1,095, clear the calculator. 
because we're treating it like two separate problems. Write this down on your scratch paper, then put in 1095 plus 90, and you should get that. Now you might also just be able to have the 1095 come up on the calculator screen and hit plus 90 equals, all right? Depends on what kind of calculator you're dealing with. If it is a PEMDAS calculator, you're gonna be able to actually put in three, the multiplication key, 365, the plus key, 90, and equals, and you should get the answer. If we enter the multiplication first, we're following PEMDAS, and it should work for any calculator. See? So it should work even if you don't have a PEMDAS calculator if you're starting with the multiplication, okay? All right, let's check out this one. If we have 48 plus 20 times 4 as a numerator and a 2 as a denominator, we know from the last video that this fraction bar, it means division, because all fractions are really just little division problems. Well, what we're going to do is we're going to do the numerator first. So even though you're supposed to multiply and then divide, that's going from left to right. In this case, we're going to do everything in the numerator. We're going to multiply and then add. We're going to go 20 times 4 plus 48. Then we're going to do this fraction bar for divided by 2. Your answer should be 104. Okay, so when you come across things like this, and we'll get into it more in fractions, we're going to have a calculator fractions video. Just know that you solve the numerator first and then you figure out the denominator. Okay, all right, so now you should be ready to do the skill focus on page 65. If you have any problems, click the description in this video and go back and figure out what you missed where you got confused so you can fill in any holes before you go on to the next lesson. You should be then ready to do the GED mini test for lessons three and four on pages 66, 67, 68, and 69. And if you do okay on those, get ready for the next lesson about fractions. If you have trouble, then go back. Figure out where you had trouble, all right? So the next video is facts about fractions. We're just going to discuss fractions. That's 5A. I might tell you some stuff you don't know. All right? And if you need more help, I have a video called Clue Words in Problems, and that'll tell you what operation to use. We're going to have several grade 3 math videos, three grade 4 math videos, some grade 5 and grade 6, and there's going to be links to the GED math videos for 2D and 4A where we talked about multi-step problems and order of operations. And know in your heart that these lower grade videos are explained a lot more basic and a lot more easier. So if you're really having trouble, start here and move on to these until you completely understand before moving on to the next lesson. All right. You do not want to move on to fractions until you have everything that we've learned so far in lesson one, two, three, and four completely understood. All right because then you'll be ready for lesson five in fractions, all right? Okay, you're going to be fine. I believe in you. We can do this, and I'll see you next video. Bye.